What's up everybody, this is Cool Game 24 here. This week I'm going to bring to you my season 5, I mean my Sons of Anarchy season 5 episode 2 review. Entitled, uh, 30 Vetted. You know, uh, sorry if I'm a little, uh, a little agitated because I just, you know, <sighs> recorded this like two times already. And the first time it cut off and the second time it didn't record any sound so you know I'm practically saying the third thing all over again so if I seem like I'm speeding trying to speed things up yes and if I miss a couple of things uh, just tell me you know a little feedback um Let's see, Jax this week uh, showed himself in this turmoil situation uh, to be a capable leader for the Suns, you know, him being able to analyze different situations and him being on point, him being a president, you know, him telling Bobby to look out for activity and paying Nero for his time and... Uh, uh, learn doing the situation between Tig and holding down Tig and, and, and controlling Tig, and you know, literally uh, strategizing the situation between you know him going to jail and you know him turning himself in and him dealing with the Glendo you know Glendo situation. Uh, this week Jax did everything right, you know. This isn't. This isn't a real test to see if Jax is, you know, capable. But this is not the overall biggest test that he has to uh, go through, you know. But this is just glimpses of, you know, turmoil what he has to, you know, go through. Um. Yeah, Jax did very good this John. And also I think if it's a strategy or not, him marrying Terra something was behind that, him marrying Terra. It was either personal reasons or giving him giving Terra more power or him doing some other reason for it, you know. If it is, uh kudos to uh Jax. Um Gemma is losing her place in the club. She's not even. She, she got checked by Jax. She. Her house got ransacked in. Uh. She has no more power over, uh. Jax. And Tara is slowly but surely taking her place and. She tried to give Tara some advice and tell Tara that she knows what it feel like to be ahead of the the club, to be, you know, be the queen of the club. And I don't know if that was a ploy to get her back into Tara's life or into Jax's life. You know, she seemed to try to do moves and she lost. It wasn't like, season, I mean, episode one. You know... She, like I said, the only person that she has is Wayne and Nero. And Nero is a sex buddy and Wayne is like her slave, <laughs> you know, because he loves her. Um, other than that, you know, the only time, I don't know if, I don't know the whole thing. I don't know if she's going to either gain her place or she's going to try to be trying to bring her power back. You know, trying to get her power back into the uh, in the club. Um, let's see. Wayne, he did good this t this season. He got his ass whipped, but he did good because um he you know he him him being a police for a long time, him knowing you know patterns and everything else, he knew that this was more than just break-ins. That's why he went to Rosabelle's office and told Roosevelt that, you know, this doesn't feel like a retaliation. This more feels like, you know, something behind it. And he told Roosevelt that he, you know, he'd been doing it for 30 years. He was working with the Suns for 30 years. 
that probably entails that you know somebody inside the club is doing this. Um. Um. Basically, him. I don't know if it's a ploy. You know, he, he told Roosevelt that to keep him posted on everything about this about the robbery situation. I mean, of the breaking situations that's happening, and he. He want to share. He want to want Roosevelt to share his notes on it, and he's going to share his notes on the, uh, Roosevelt so they can work together. Like I said, I don't know if it's a ploy for Gemma or for himself, because I know it's not for Clay. I, don't, I it would be weird if it's for Clay. Um, to, this episode really seems to be out of control, as I said before in the other episode, the rubber review. He was about to shoot three black guys on a porch. Jack stopped him good because Jax told him, you know, this is one of the reasons why. This is the reason why we in this mess in the first place because you shoot first and ask questions later. Um and, you know, he looked for his daughter because Jax found the address to look uh, where his daughter was at and he goes through room to room and busts in and hears his daughter screaming. And the next minute he know his daughter is getting having sex with having sex with a black guy and she was she was tied up now and you know he hits he hits the dude and said are you alright and, and she's like what are you doing this is my boyfriend um and Jack's you know face he said <laughs> he said oh wow <laughs> um he sat down and told his daughter that you know, it was a black guy was after him, racist again, because he called the guy on a porch a coon, um, and he he said you have to leave, and she said, you know, what happened? You told Donnie to leave, and when she found out that Donnie is dead, she repeatedly told him just she hate him, and her boyfriend was about to get up and you know do something, but they told her to calm down and told him you know if you loved her. If you care about her, you get her out of here. And you see, Tig is torn up. Um, for me, I don't know. Tig need to go. Tig need to get out of the Suns. He doesn't fit into Jax's regime. He fit in the Clay regime, but he doesn't fit into J into Jax's regime. Jax doesn't need someone like that in his club that always causes problems and never never questions a hit or never actually thinks about different scenarios because if to me Tig is, is dumb because if he knew that Clay you know if he was actually smart and when Clay said it was blacks he would have did a bit more than an investigation instead of running over a girl in a car running trying to run over Leroy in a car one of the dumbest things he ever did he could have followed Leroy home you know, and that just show how overly racist he is because he didn't even care about that girl. So, basically, as I said, he deserved this for doing what he did. Not only that, he deserved this for killing the brother's wife. Remember, he kills Obi's wife without even knowing anything about it. He, he, all I knew, he, he needs to get out of the sun's bro. He causes too much problems. Um, Tara. She did. It. She struggled this episode with her power. You know, you see her trying to trying to gain composure over her new role as the queen, but she will always revert back to her old ways of worrying about Jax and worrying about the whole situation. But then she, you know, like she changed into a new person. She changed. She changed her person. You know, she changes her facial expressions and everything she does. She like, you know catches herself and then she's like okay you can do it go go get him Bob you know whatever she said and I hope to see her really 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 you know see if she's ready for this power role I want to see if, if she I want to see in later episodes her getting tested you know see if she's ready for this role not only that since she is married to Jax now that gives her way more power over the club and to set things up and I think that was Jack's intentions I don't know if it was but gave her a lot of power and 
seeing if she can use it a quote right uh she and she can use it right um let's see uh Nero you see like a good guy him and Jack Sarah similar similarities to each other um they both have their name their son's tattoos on their uh on their body they both their both of their sons have uh birth defects um and both of their former wives were drug addicts so they share some similarities to each other and also uh it seemed to me Nero is kind of like a mirror image of Jax maybe a mirror image of Jax you know because Jax trying to live that same lifestyle when, when Nero was telling him about you know he know all the people who either dead or inside and he the only one survived you know Jax is kind of look, seen at because the first nine it kind of reflection on the first nine he was there you know he was a young boy but he saw it you know the first nine most of them are dead and only one left <laughs> that's all um Nero you know he didn't show anything new except him caring for Gemma or trying to play with Gemma's mind I don't know it it's hard to analyze this guy because we don't know anything about this guy except you know the, the seminars he shared with Jax that's all um let's see Pope seemed to take an interest in Jax and seemed to like the strategy that they was doing in this episode because he was like you know them white boys are a resourceful bunch you know um but you know near the end the uh, first I mean the last 10 minutes of this episode he seemed to review Jax's picture a lot longer than anybody else's so I don't know if he's taking an interest in Jax or he wants to do he, he he has another plan you know we didn't see what kind of plan he has we just know the same plan he uh the same plan he put forth in episode one you know putting him in jail and trapping him but he didn't he didn't predict that Opie was going to be there and Chip was going to be there he just wanted Tig and um Tig and Jax um Opie uh no 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 Clay first Clay I don't know if Clay is playing this broken down role of being an old man because we seen in the last episode last episode him trying to get on a bike uh I know he's not willing to give up his position or give up his power as I said before he's trying he either you know sitting back and letting everything flow so he can take the wait for the opportunities to catch so he can you know try to dominate someone or he basically gonna live through someone in the club because he has no real power he has no real physical power left and he told Opie that he's out the club you know he he feels that he's not even he, he's he's not close and he's not getting any older and he's out his he's on his way out the door Opie you know he told Opie about the whole situation where he just admitted to the whole club that he murdered Piney and the history and stuff and Opie stopped right there and, you know he's like it's bullshit that's your truth that's not what really happened but then Clay did something unexpected by telling Opie that you know Jax needs you you know Jax want, wanted you there you know he wanted you there to the club and you know Opie took it in consideration and here we go to Opie um Opie said he was gonna be the new Jax and what the new Jax symbolizes is what Jax did for the club and all four seasons Jax was always the worst of reason Jax was always the future of the, of the uh, club and Jax was always the person who wanted to do the right thing but knew that the right thing wasn't always considered you know good for the club but he always thought about the club 
he always needed he always wanted to see the club get out of the gun business and do something good for the club um now Opie want that role Opie not want that role Opie is moving into that role to being the person who's going to keep Jackson on the right path and make sure that if he do turn into uh if he does turn into um something worse than Clay or even the new form of Clay uh he's going to be there and he's going to be there every step of the way challenging him challenging Jax keeping him in line you know that's what Jax's role was to Clay now this is the role that Opie took towards uh to Jax um I'm gonna finish off with what I want to see in the next episode um I would like to see Trevor do something while Jax is inside I would love to see more information on Pope and Nero uh I want to see the scenario play out between the whole you know jail situation um I really want to see Lincoln Potter come back. <laughs> I miss that character. He was one of the coolest characters I saw on um, Sons of Anarchy. I really want him to come back. Uh, the Glendo, uh, they're not really that good of a strategist, man. I thought they was beast in uh, in season four with their military knowledge and everything else, but they seem to not know what the hell to do in this episode. I hope they show more. You know, they can't even protect Jax. And I want to show how powerful these guys really is towards Pope. You know, I want to see I want to see the test of power between Pope and the Galindo. You know, because Pope, he's a powerful guy. He has people in the system. But the Galindo, they supposed to have the CIA contact and stuff and protect Jax. I, I just don't know, you know. Um, that's a lot of... In different stuff I want to see. I want to see Opie, how he going to do the conversations, the dialogue between Opie and Jax, the see if Tig, what Tig's going to do. Uh, that's a lot of different stuff, you know. Um, you either, you, you can either like my comment, dislike it, or comment, you know, on there, a little feedback. If not, you know, it's still good. Um, yeah, I'll see everyone later.